Hi, welcome to Pharma Instinct Clinical Research Interview Question Preparation. You will get 5 seconds to pick the correct answer. The first question is. How many members should an ethics committee have? Here are your options. A. At least 3. B. At least 5. C. At least 7. D. There is no specification. Your time starts now. The correct answer is B, at least 5. Ethics committee should have at least 5 members. This minimum number is often suggested to ensure diversity in expertise and perspectives, as ethics committees typically consist of individuals with diverse backgrounds, including medical, scientific, ethical, and legal expertise. Next question is, what role can the investigator play in the ethics committee review of a study? Here are your options, A, none, they can't attend. B, they can give information and vote. C, they can give information but cannot vote. D, they can vote but can't give any further information about the study. Your time starts now. The correct answer is C, they can give information but cannot vote. Investigators can provide information and answer questions during the ethics committee review process, but they typically do not have voting rights. This separation helps maintain an independent and unbiased evaluation of the research study. The next question is, how many types of ethics committees are there in clinical research? Here are your options, A, 1, B, 2, C, 3, D, 4. Your time starts now. The correct answer is B. There are two types of ethics committees. One is institutional ethics committee, and other is independent ethics committee. The next question is, on which form number does the ethics committee apply for registration? Here are your options. A. CT01. B. CT02. C. CT05. D. Form 2. Your time starts now. The correct answer is A. A CT01. Ethics Committee submits the CT01 form to the CDSCO for registration, then they get approval on CT02 form. The next question is, what is the role of an IRB slash IEC? Here are your options. A. To design the protocol for a clinical trial. B. To assess whether a clinical trial is ethical for the given subject population. C. To analyze the data from a clinical trial. D. To assess whether a medicinal product should be granted a marketing authorization. Your time starts now. The correct answer is B, to assess whether a clinical trial is ethical for the given subject population. The primary role of an Institutional Review Board, IRB, or Independent Ethics Committee, IEC, is to review and ensure the ethical conduct of clinical trials involving human participants. The next question is, in the context of research ethics, what does the term conflict of interest refer to? Here are your options, A, a disagreement among researchers. B. Financial or personal interests that may compromise objectivity. C. A dispute within the ethics committee. D. The right to withhold information from participants. Your time starts now. The correct answer is B. Financial or personal interests that may compromise objectivity. In the context of research ethics, a conflict of interest refers to situations where researchers or individuals involved in the research process have financial or personal interests that could potentially compromise their objectivity, integrity, or decision-making. The next question is, 
Which of the following is a key ethical principle considered by ethics committees? Here are your options. A. Profitability. B. Confidentiality. C. Competition. D. None of the above. Your time starts now. The correct answer is, B. Confidentiality. Confidentiality is a key ethical principle considered by ethics committees in research. It involves protecting the privacy and sensitive information of research participants. The next question is, which ethical principle emphasizes the need to maximize benefits and minimize harm in research? Here are your options, A. Autonomy. B. Justice. C. Beneficence. D. Veracity. Your time starts now. The correct answer is, C. Beneficence. The ethical principle that emphasizes the need to maximize benefits and minimize harm in research is beneficence. This principle requires researchers to strive to do good, promote well-being, and ensure the welfare of research participants. The next question is, how does the concept of debriefing relate to research ethics? Here are your options, a. Providing participants with false information. b. Withholding information from participants. c. Informing participants about the study's purpose and outcomes. d. Ignoring participants after the study is complete. Your time starts now. The correct answer is, C, informing participants about the study's purpose and outcomes. In research ethics, debriefing refers to the process of providing participants with relevant information about the study after their involvement is complete. This includes informing participants about the purpose, goals, and outcomes of the research. The next question is, what is the primary role of an ethics committee in a research setting? Here are your options. A. Data analysis. B. Participant recruitment. C. Ensuring ethical standards in research. D. Budget management. Your time starts now. The correct answer is C. Ensuring ethical standards in research. The primary role of an ethics committee in a research setting is to ensure ethical standards and guidelines are followed throughout the research process. This includes reviewing research proposals, assessing the potential risks and benefits to participants, and ensuring that the research design aligns with ethical principles. Ethics committees are responsible for safeguarding the rights, well-being, and confidentiality of research participants. Thank you for staying till the last make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Remember to press the bell icon and also comment your score down below.